three months ago, Westchester, New York, just south of the Xavier Mansion. From the dark blue sky of night comes an object hurtling from space, impacting hard with the grassy fields below. The X-Men have little time, rushing as best they can to the scene before police and government officials beat them to it. What is it? The group stare in amazement at the steaming, crashed object. It looks like a black metallic egg. It looks like a spaceship of some kind. Small, though. Could be an escape pod. Is she our vessel? None that I've seen. Maybe I should phase in. Take a look. You most certainly will not. Before they can say another word, the object cracks, the top splitting into four quarters as it opens. What the... is that a... We had better get it back to the mansion. Fast. The team only just beat the authorities, recovering the vessel's occupant and returning in stealth to the school. Perhaps we should contact Hank, Professor. Perhaps. But I believe he's otherwise engaged in Avenger business right now. How are you all so calm? Look at that thing! It's an alien! A real, honest-to-God alien. Kitty stares in wide-eyed amazement at the green and brown scaled insect-like creature, unconscious on the table before them. This isn't our first extraterrestrial encounter, Kitty. Though, I must admit that those were a little more... human. Humanoid, at least. It looks like a xenomorph. You know, from those old alien movies? Let us not jump to conclusions based on fiction, Kitty. This being obviously crashed landed here by mistake. The fact it is apparently out cold is evidence of that. That or it's a really crappy pilot. Perhaps you should all go back to bed and leave me with it. I will try to communicate with it telepathically. You're joking, right? You want us to leave you all alone with a creepy alien that could wake up at any moment? I have my powers, Wolverine. I will be fine. If its brains even work like ours, I'll stick around if it's all the same, Chuck. You expect the rest of us to just go to bed? After this? There is little we can do at this moment. Come, kitten. <sighs> you guys are so lame sometimes. Before long, Xavier and Wolverine are left alone with the being. All right. Let's begin with a hello, shall we? Xavier touches his fingers to his temples and begins to reach out. Xavier! Charles Xavier! Come to me! Bring my offspring to me! Please! A voice from a distant world. Here we go again. And so, the next day. I have contacted Lalandra. She is sending a ship to pick me up and take myself and this brood to its homeworld. Brood? That is how they refer to themselves. They appear to be of a hive mind. Their queen asked me to return her child to her. I have agreed. So we're going with you, right? I was asked to come alone. The brood do not trust humanoids. They only trust me because of our psychic bond. Now I know you're joking. Do you realize how dumb you sound? Lilandra's people will be ready to act on a moment's notice to help me if needed. Besides, you are needed here. I won't be gone long. All the same, I would advise that a small group of us make the trip with you. No. I will be fine, Storm. That is final. And so the trip went ahead as planned, Xavier being transported aboard the Shi'ar ship and returning almost a week later. When he did, he spoke very little of his experience, only that the brood was returned home. Two days later, Rogue would make her visit, and the team would have a new focus. Three months later, the team's mind is once again focused elsewhere, as Peter Rasputin stands on the back porch on the phone in Russian to his little sister abroad. No, Ilyana. I agree. It is much safer for you here with me. I just worry that given the current events, that the Americans will not allow you into the country. You should worry about yourself, dear brother. Our country has gone mad. Only our leaders. 
I would think, given recent examples, that they would wish to avoid war. I suppose I was wrong. You need to be careful, brother. Everyone there will now hate you both in your human and mutant form. I know. I am even getting that feeling from my team. Even Kitty has become different with me. It will not be easy for you here, little sister. I know, but I want to be with you. Mother and father are... I do not wish to stay with them any longer. I will leave in two weeks. I understand. We have also stopped talking as of late. Father and I just don't see things the same way anymore. Let me know when your flight is due in. I will come and collect you from the airport, yes? I shall see you then, brother. Colossus exhales, turning to see Aurora stood behind him. My sister is going to stay with us. She no longer wishes to be in Russia. Have you told the professor? I have. He has agreed that she may attend the school with the new mutants. Even though she is not a mutant herself? Even so. Storm, I... Do not say it, Peter. As mutants, we all know what it is like to be outcast because of our race. This is no different. I know you, Peter, as do we all. Your heart, like many of your people, is pure. Like all of our home countries, we cannot control what those in power do. The things that have happened in my homeland, I dare not speak of them. You are still one of us, Peter. No matter what some political tyrant running your country does. I... Thank you, Aurora. But do the others feel the same? Of course. Even Kitty. She will come around. She likes you too much. Indeed. Peter! Aurora! Come quickly. The professor has received a call from Lelandra. It's bad. Moments later, in Xavier's study. Everyone is here, Lelandra. What is it? The Brood, Charles. The Brood are planning to invade Earth. Several days pass until Lelandra's ship arrives. As soon as it does, she transports down to the Xavier's school. She now stands in his study with the gathered X-Men. I am sorry. I did not know where else to turn. The Imperial Guard are off in the far reaches of space. I cannot reach them, but I had to warn you. Well then, let's go stop him. Wait a moment. I am confused, Professor. You said they were grateful to you for returning their kin. Evidently, that was just a ruse. My people have battled with these creatures for centuries. They are vermin, an infestation to be wiped out. Then why did you help Xavier in returning the alien to its home world? I, we, hoped it would be a peace offering, a proof of good faith. We thought they had finally evolved, changed. We were wrong. So what's the plan? We have located a hive on a world we believe to be the staging ground for their invasion. Their numbers are vast, but not impossibly large. We believe with a well-armed strike force we can put an end to the threat to your planet before it begins. Show them that attacking Earth won't be so easy. Wait, you want us to go with you to space? That's no biggie. Catch up, rookie. When do we leave? Right away, if you are ready. I will remain here to care for the new students. I'm going too. Kitten. Nope. Pumpkin. You shut it too, Logan. I'm going, and that's that. I'm an X-Man, same as the rest of you. Very well, but at the first sign of trouble... I run. Got it. God, you treat me like a little kid. We're just trying to protect you, Katya. Don't you start. Very well, then. I shall prepare my ship for your arrival. Soon after, the X-Men teleport aboard the Shi'ar starship. Oh, wow. We are actually in space. This is nuts. That's one word for it. My aide here will take you to your living quarters. Make yourselves at home. It will be four days' voyage in your time. My sister is Do they suspect anything, Empress? <laughs> Not a thing. The young queen is doing her part in making sure Xavier is puppeteered nicely. Set a course for the brood outpost. Maximum speed! At once. 
Why? Why did I do that? I knew that was wrong. What Lalandra's true intentions are. Why didn't I stop them? I've just fed the X-Men to- To me. But now with both the Avengers and X-Men of planet, the time has come to plant our seed. We will begin with the fresh meat you recruited just for me. The new mutants. What do they have to do with this? Think, Charles. You know. You know why you truly recruited them. The X-Men were too powerful, too well-trained to be taken out in force here on their home ground. But these children, they will fall to us. The first of many of the new Earth. No! No! Internally, he screams as loud as he can, but his body shows none of that emotion, save for a single bead of sweat dropping down his forehead. He then reaches up and presses to roll his chair forward. It is time. Kansas, just outside of Garden City, Scott Summers is on a long walk in the dense fields with his new partner. They began their state-to-state -state road trip a month ago, though it would be more accurate to call it a plane trip, given their mode of transportation. <sighs> this is nice. Yeah, but our savings and my vacation days are starting to run real dry summers. We need to get back to our lives. You're right, but you have a life to go back to, Maddie. I don't. Not anymore. What the? The two look up as a being appears in light before them. When he fades into view, Scott realizes it is... Corsair. What? Who? Did he just beam in? Like in Star Trek? Sorry, Maddie. I, I don't have time to explain. Scott runs up to him. Corsair, what are you doing here? I had to find you. I got here too late. The X-Men were already gone, and Xavier's infected. I spoke to Warren Worthington, who said that you'd be here, but tracking you down... What the hell do you mean, Xavier's infected? By who? It's a long story. <laughs> Guess it makes sense that you're the only one left I can turn to. There are other former X-Men out there. Why me? Because. Corsair reaches into his jacket and pulls out a locket, holding it up to Scott. He opens it to show two pictures. In one is a woman Scott recognizes. The other is of Scott and Alex as young boys. What? Where did you get that? It's mine. And, and so are you, son. It's me, Scott. I go by Corsair now, but here on Earth, my name was Major Christopher Summers. Shortly thereafter, at Scott's rented car. But how? How can this be? My father's dead. I'm sorry, Scott. I'm sorry I never got back here till now. They, they took me. The Shi'ar. They caused the plane crash. Beamed us up onto his ship right after you and Alex jumped out of the plane. Whose ship? Dakin. He... He killed her. Your mother. I've spent the last 20 years trying to get revenge for that. For them taking us. Finally, a few years back, with your help, I got that. Why didn't you tell me? I couldn't. I was a coward. I'm sorry. And I'm lost. You want to fill me in, Scott? <sighs> you know I told you that I was a mutant. Well, that's not all of it. I was also the leader of the X-Men, Maddie. As Cyclops. Well, yeah. Duh. What? Who else has red lasers coming out of their eyes? I watch the news. Now tell me what I don't know. This is your dad? I... Uh, well, the X-Men went to space a few years back. To space? Yeah, and saved the universe itself. By stopping the mad Shi'ar Emperor Daken from getting control of a very powerful item called a Macron Crystal. But we stopped him with this man's help. He's a space pirate. And turns out that, yeah, he's my... No, no, I... 
I still don't believe it. She knew. What? Jean knew. Found out the whole thing when she joined our minds. But I promised her not to tell you. I thought it best you never knew. I have been gone a long time, Scott, and I had no intention of ever coming back. I didn't want you to be reunited with a father you'd know only briefly, and then maybe never again. But I think she knew we'd meet again, and that I'd have to tell you someday, I guess. I guess that day is today. I... I don't know what to say to that. I heard about Jean Scott, and I'm sorry. But I see that you soon found a new catch. And a beauty at that. The name's Madeline, and my mind is officially soup right now. I'm sorry, but we don't have time, Scott. Xavier's going to infect those new kids he recruited, and the X-Men are going to be led to their slaughter in space. You better start at the beginning. Over the next half hour, Corsair explains it all. How the Brood Queen used her mind link to brainwash Xavier into coming to her alone. How he was then implanted with her egg, and under its influence recruited the new mutants as powerful but susceptible prey, and how the X-Men have been tricked by Lilandra into flying into a trap. And how do you know about all of this? Because the mastermind behind this plot tried to hire us, to help her take her rightful throne. I told her we needed time to think about it, then we ran. But before I could tell anyone, the space tramp framed us for attacking the Shi'ar Council branded as terrorists. The Shi'ar have orders to shoot the Starjammers on sight. You X-Men are all the hope I have... had. But why would Lalandra help these brood? Because, Scott, she's not Lalandra. Hello, Katya. Did you sleep well? A bit. Kitty, why are you being like this with me? Like what? I do not know. Distant. And just all those horrible things in the news? Every time I hear you speak, I think of them. I know it's not your fault. You're one of the good ones. Good ones? Kitty, do you hear yourself? You sound just like every human who slanders mutant kind. If we ask the world to accept us for being mutants, can you not do the same with me being a Russian? You're right. I'm being super racist right now. I'm sorry, Peter. I believe the term is xenophobic. But I accept your apology. Can we just go back to how things were between us, please? Maybe more? Poor Kitty. X-Men, to the bridge. We have arrived at the Brood Planet. Shortly. I and a legion of my best will be coming with you. Do you think this is wise, Lilandra? Are you not taking a child on your team, Storm? Fair point. The X-Men and Shi'ar landing team step up onto the teleporter pad. Transport now. The transported group appear below in an underground cavern, and as the Shi'ar warriors activate their handheld lights, the X-Men stare in amazement and horror at the sight of the cave walls, covered in some sort of black and brown organic matter. Stay close, X-Men. We are in the heart of this hive's nest. We must move fast to take out the Queen before we are discovered. When she falls, the rest will follow. Lead the way. The group walk with haste deeper into the tunnels, traveling in a huddled pack. Anyone else wondering why we haven't run into any of those things yet? I still can't believe this is happening, by the way. Indeed. It's too quiet. It was before you two started yammering. This way. Uh, does Lilandra seem different to you? The last time we met, she forced my best friend to kill herself, so no, she does not. Uh, hello? Anyone else hear that? What? That! Kitty breaks away from the group towards the sound, 
Kitten, kitten, get back here now. We might be being followed, Storm. I'm just making sure. <laughs> Whoa! Kitty ducks as suddenly a purple creature that looks like a small dragon flies past her head, flying to land on a mound of rock on the far wall. Wow, a dragon! Kitty, stay back! Are you real? Are you friendly? Oh, you must be. I'm still alive. Look, guys, a dragon! The dragon flies up to Kitty, circling her and generally showing great affection. I think it likes me. What is the delay? I found a dragon, Lalandra. That is a deadly creature. Stand back. I will end it. She motions to her guards to aim. No, no, he's friendly. He's mine. Kitty grabs the dragon and cradles him. That is not a pet girl. That is an alien creature. Maybe. But he's my friend. Now back off! Mm, we don't have time for this. Fine. Bring the beast if it brings you comfort. Not that it will matter much longer anyway. The X-Men follow Lilandra and the Shi'ar to a large open chamber in the caverns. Their wonder soon replaced with terror as the walls begin to come alive. The black walls move slowly at first, but then begin to scurry down the rock faces. The X-Men realize too late that they are surrounded by the brood hive. The X-Men then look up to see a much larger brood before them. It is the size of a house. Its insect-like features more colorful and broad than the others. It speaks without any movement from its mouth. The voice is within their heads. Lilandra, we are surrounded. We must return to the ship. <laughs> Sorry, Storm, but Lalandra's not here. And she never was. What? You humans. I guess I look more like my sister than I thought to fool you so easily. The name is Calcie Naramani, but you may call me Deathbird. Lalandra is my dear sister and far, far from here. But after today, you won't be able to help her any more than her Imperial Guard can. You won't be able to stop me from taking my rightful throne. But first, it's feeding time, brood. <laughs> The battle is quick, but painful, and the X-Men have no chance against the combined force. Deathbird is now taking her leave of the Queen and her brood hive. The X-Men, engorged by the organic mass on the walls to pin them to the cave walls. I think you can take it from here, brood. Just be sure that none escape. With the Star Jammers on the run and the Imperial Guard off in a distant corner of the galaxy, thanks to that... <laughs> leaked intelligence on my whereabouts. These X-Men were the only ally my dear sister could call upon. But no longer. Enjoy your lives as part of the brood, X-Men. Stick it up your tail feathers, lady. I like you, Wolverine. <sighs> A shame. You could have served me well in the new Shire Empire. Niramani to Black Talon, bring us back. All but the human mutants. Well, any bright ideas, my friends? I... I can't concentrate to phase. They put something inside me. I can feel it moving around my insides. I feel it too, Kitty. Most unnerving. Kitty looks down at her hand, seeing green and black scales beginning to form. We're gonna become one of them, aren't we? Yes, you are. Do not fight it. Soon you will be at peace as part of my hive. And I will have powerful brood that phase, teleport, turn to metal, control the weather, and heal from any wound. She looks to each of them as she says this. Are you sure you want my powers in your hive, Queenie? Of course. Not only can you take the gifts of others, you also have within you the key to understanding and defeating one of our greatest enemies, the Kree. As the conversation continues, Kitty noticed something out of the corner of her eye, flying into view. Dragon! What? The Queen looks up too late, 
as the small purple dragon creature flies in and blasts at her with its fire breath. Wow, you really are a dragon. He then flies up, avoiding the other brood, and then swooping down and blasting at the organic gunk covering the X-Men, freeing them. My, my powers. <laughs> I feel them again. <laughs> I as well. The matter that encased us must have somehow suppressed them. And without Deathbird's help, you creatures are on your own. The dragon comes in again for another attack. Its breath eviscerating several brood and turning them to ash. Yeah, it's clobbering time. The queen rises up, half of her face now bubbled and burnt. Get her! Don't let them escape! Death us! We need you back here! There is no answer. The X-Men, all now free, charge and engage the hive. Wolverine slashes his claws, cutting heads and limbs from the brood bodies. Nightcrawler porting to attack them from all sides. Storm blasting them with the strongest winds and lightning blasts she can summon on this strange world. Kitty phasing through them to disorient their minds, while Rogue and Colossus just hit them very hard. Nightcrawler drops to his knees in pain. Cut. Uh, I feel it, Aurora. The thing inside of me. It. It. Pain. I feel pain. The host is fighting me, revered mother. Endure, my child. Soon you will be in control. As will your brothers and sisters inside of the other. The queen is cut off as Wolverine drives his claws into her side. She responds, swinging her massive tails stinging and sending Wolverine flying across the cavern. Get away from me! Let us see you try to do that to me, dear mother. Storm rises herself up into the air, summoning a massive bolt of lightning and sending it down into the Queen. This thing within me will not control me, Brood, and neither will you. On board the Black Talon. Something is wrong. The Queen is calling me. Prepare to reverse course. Empress, three Imperial vessels are dropping out of faster than light around us. What? The Black Talon is indeed now surrounded by Shi'ar vessels. We are being hailed. Put them on! How dare you intercept and block my vessel! I am Lalandra, Empress of the Shire! Strange, because I don't believe I'm on board that ship and I do not recall being cloned. Lalandra! Hello, sister. Did you really think we wouldn't decipher your fake distress call? It fooled you long enough. Indeed. If that is the case, then why am I here? My Imperial Guard may still be in the far reaches of our space, Kal Sa'i, but I and every soul aboard these three vessels are here now. Surrender. At once. Never! You stole my throne! It is mine by law! You gave up the throne years ago when you turned our own people against each other. And you didn't! Which of us was it that overthrew our brother and usurped his throne? That was different. Was it? Seems pretty much the same to me. Stand down, sister, while you still can. Deathbird gestures to her crewman, telling him to cut her off. He does just that. Emergency jump to our home base, now! Before the other Shi'ar vessels can react, the Black Talon seems to fade out before their eyes and suddenly jump to FTL. On board her bridge, Lilandra scowls. They have jumped. Shall we proceed? 
It is too late. She is gone. Besides, I want to know what she was up to in this system. Set a course for the fifth planet. Below on that planet, the fierce battle continues to rage. Rogue flies over to the fallen Nightcrawler. His skin and features now beginning to become more and more like the brood. Nightcrawler, <laughs> can you hear me? Yes, yes, it is difficult. I... It is taking over my body, my mind. I can't hold on much longer. You have to, we're with it. We'll get you back home and then... And then what? Nightcrawler strikes Rogue. She stands firm, but the being's point is clear. You have no ship. Even if you beat us, you are stuck here forever. Sorry, Kurt. I think I better put you to sleep for your own good. Rogue goes to strike him as gently as she can. But as the punch swings down, Nightcrawler ports. What the? And appears across the cave behind her. His powers are mine now. As you soon will be to your Hatchley. Now, Crawler, you have to fight it. I... I can't. You... you must. Oh, no. Uh. Rogue falls to the ground, clutching her torso in pain. This is happening to me now, too. Yes. Give in, child. Give in and you'll never be alone again. We'll never abandon you as your family did. Never use you like Mystique did. Liar! That's all you do, parasite! The Brood and X-Men alike turn towards the sudden appearance of a teleporter beam. One soon replaced by Lilandra and a legion of her warriors. No, she's back. Never! You have returned! These X-Men, they escaped as to an idiot creature of some sort. I would, but you see... Lilandra walks up to the Queen, getting close enough to act before the enemy can do anything about her next move. She brings up the hilt of her energy sword and presses to activate it, the light blade shooting up and through the Queen's head. I'm not my sister. The brood howl in pain at their mother's death. The remaining beings soon being defeated or scurrying off into the dark. Lilandra watches the last of them go and turns off her blade, returning it to her belt. My forces will hunt them down. They won't get far. They will infect this world no longer. Lilandra? Yes. My sister is long gone. She underestimated my people in discovering her plot. I am only sorry it was too late for... Charles. Something is happening with Charles on Earth. Yeah, the alien thing said something about him being already infected. <sighs> Bet I know when. You are correct. We must return to Earth. Now. Hey, forgive me if I don't jump in your ship and go right with you. How do we know this is the real you this time? I suppose you will just have to trust me. And given that I am the only person with the medical technology to remove those brood eggs from your bodies, and a ship to take you home, I think you have little choice, girl. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go! Back at the mansion on Earth, Xavier has gathered his newest students. Thank you all for coming. I have gathered you here today because there is one last lesson I need to teach you. Get away from them! The teens turn to see Cyclops and Corsair at the lounge entrance. Cyclops! Cyclops? The old leader of the X-Men. What are you doing here? Saving your lives, kid. Get back. You should have just blasted me with those eyes of yours, Mr. Summers. But thank you for coming. Now I have another powerful mutant to implant. Implant? What is going on here? I'm starting to think coming here was a bad idea. Xavier's eyes grow black and with a quick but fierce psi blast sends the closer new mutants flying across the room. Since when can Xavier do that? Since that's no longer Xavier. Kids, are you okay? 
Oh, don't worry about them, Cyclops. They are beyond help. You should feel rather for yourself. Charles Xavier bends forwards in his wheelchair, his back bursting open as two insect-like wings come from it. And before his eyes, Scott Summers watches the closest thing he has had to a father in 20 years transform into a demonic, insectical creature. With yellow eyes, two rows of teeth, and a lapping, pointed tongue. Charles Xavier is no more, and in his place is a young, brood queen. What in the name of God is that? What has happened to Professor Xavier? What you don't like this form, my children? Do not worry. You'll have your own very soon. I shall be the queen of the Earth Hive, and you all shall be my first powerful batch. I don't think so. Yet? Yeah. Try, bug ass. The new mutants now form up behind Cyclops in a battle ready stance. But that is Professor Xavier. We can't. We have to, kid. Xavier's gone. It hurts me to say that more than you will ever know, but it's the truth. What do you call yourselves? The new X-Men? Uh, new mutants, sir. Generic, but okay. All right, new mutants, on me. Enough talk. The brood queen launches forward at them. Defend yourselves. We have entered Earth's solar system, Empress. Full speed to Earth and prepare an assault force. The doors of the bridge open, and the X-Men emerge. Hello, X-Men. I trust you are now yourselves once more. The brood eggs have been removed from us, yes. Ah, it is suddenly so quiet, uh, peaceful. Not for long. Professor Xavier was infected months ago. The thing has been growing slowly inside of him since, influencing his mind. There's no telling how far Garni is. Indeed, we must act fast. But I fear we may be too late. With a crash, the young brood queen that once was Charles Xavier is blasted through the mansion walls. It tumbles on the grass before rising up again. From the makeshift exit comes the new mutants, Corsair and Cyclops. Cyclops opens his visor and fires his optic blast, Corsair shooting his laser pistol at the thing. Besides them, Rain Sinclair transforms and charges at him. Sunspot, blasting his swirling black-spotted fire blasts at the alien. Cannonball, blasting off into it, knocking the alien down as he crashes into it. Karma, Danielle, can you get through to him? I'm trying, but there isn't much of a human mind left to reach, Cyclops. Scott looks to Karma, who also shakes her head. Then, suddenly... The X-Men, Lilandra, and her forces appear in light on the lawn. Whoa! What the hell is going on here? Scott? Just had to come back and trash the place, didn't you, Summers? Oh man, it's good to see you all, but we don't have the time. Cyclops, where is Professor Xavier? Scott says nothing, just points at the growing brood queen. Oh no. Afraid so, weather girl. Corsair? Long story for later, let's take this thing down. Just like old times, leader man. The combined force of X-Men and New Mutants run across the lawn. Colossus is one of the first to reach the Queen, but is snatched up by one of its tentacles and tosses him up into the air, <laughs> held up high above as the Queen speaks. <laughs> you have lost, X-Men. For all his strength, Colossus is as powerless against me as Cyclops and the children. Nor will the rest of you fare any better. I suggest you flee. Whoa! With a jerk of the tentacle, Peter is thrown far across the lawn at the X-Men. But Wolverine just leaps over him and jumps up for the Queen. 
Oh yeah, good advice. The kind I've been ignoring all my life. Besides, we just killed your revered mother, so... How hard could it be to take you down, too? With Xavier's powers, much harder. Wolverine flies through the air with his claws extended, but is blasted with a psi blast from the Queen. He falls, clutching his head. Wolverine! Logan! Besides them, Karma tries once more to use her powers to take control of the thing. But with Xavier's gifts, it just deflects the attack right back at her. I was going to implant you all, but for this insolence I will tear a few of you to shreds. Starting with you, Wolverine. I will tear your flesh from your unbreakable bones. Pop down. Rogue flies in and strikes the queen. That is followed by a blast from Cyclops, a lightning blast from Storm, and a charging blast from Cannonball. The queen is faltering. Now, distracted, Wolverine is free from the psychic attack and stands. I got an idea. He turns to the rising Colossus. Petey! Fastball! Now! He does as he is told. Wolverine flying through the air at the Queen. Distracted by the onslaught of attacks, the Queen does not see him until it is too late. Wolverine flying over it and slicing off its wings. <laughs> A combined blast of attacks from the entire combined Shi'ar and mutant force follow. <laughs> the Queen can only hold out so long. It falls in defeat to the grass below. The team runs up to it. The queen isn't moving. Is she dead? If she isn't, Kurt, she soon will be. I could have slain her with my lightning bolt, but I could not bring myself to do it. It is still Professor Xavier. No, it's not. No shame in being what you are, darling. Everyone get back. I'll do it. Not this time, Wolverine. I'm the killer on this team, remember? No. I was the first X-Man. It's... my right. My responsibility. Cyclops aims his eyes for the downed beast, bringing up his fingers to press his visor. Forgive me, Professor. If... there was any other way... There is... none, Scott. Professor. Y yes Mental transformation. Incomplete. Being. Resisting. All my might. Shock of the assault enabled me to gain the upper hand. Eventually, the brood persona will overwhelm me. That cannot happen. For the good of Earth, of humanity, kill me, Scott. I beg you. You heard the man. I also heard Phoenix play this tune right before she died. I never had a chance to save the woman I love. I'm damned if I'm gonna watch Charles Xavier go the same way. So long as there's hope, no matter how slight, the X-Men fight to preserve life. To create, not destroy. Any objections? Yeah, lots. None. So, that's Cyclops. Wow. There is hope. A chance. What chance? If you will permit me to take Charles back to my ship, we have the technology to clone his body and transport his mind into the clone. Wait, for real? Well, now I've heard it all. It does not sound possible, to be sure. What are the risks? No more than ending him here. If it does not work, then we will terminate him. The gathered collective of mutants and allies look to Cyclops. Do it. Later, aboard Lilandra's flagship. Lilandra and her head doctor emerge from the medical bay. Did it work? The mind has been transferred to the new body, and the original mutated one has been disposed of. It looks promising, but only time will tell. Not long after, the X-Men gather in the medical bay, around the new, cloned body of their mentor. So, if this works... Will he be able to walk again? 
The injury to his spine was part of his old body. So yes, he will. Then, as horrific as the ordeal was, it would seem to have been worth it. I hope so. Charles. Lilandra. Where am I? It will take some time to explain, but I am very happy to see you. Around them, the X-Men shed tears and celebrate this victory, pulled from the ashes of this horror. Later, on Earth. So, you're going back? My ship is waiting for me, Scott. My life is there. Why? Why didn't you even try to come back for all these years? Scott... After your mother died, I was sold into slavery. I spent years in the pits fighting for my life. And well, when you and your brother jumped from the plane, your mother and I saw your parachute catch fire. I thought you were gone too. Until I saw you during the McCran ordeal. But still you didn't say anything. I'm sorry. Like I said, I was a coward. But I must say, son, I am proud of the man you have become. Will you come back? Visit Alex and I. Of course. Soon. I promise. All right. I'll see you then, Dad. Corsair smiles, then signals to be teleported up. In a flash of light, he is gone once more. Scott Summers now returns to the front of the mansion grounds. There, he finds a familiar face in a rented, open-topped convertible. Hey, Summers. You want a ride? Maddie, I thought, how did you get here? The address is on the card in your wallet. Your wallet that you left at the hotel in Kansas. <laughs> I didn't think I'd see you again. I thought all that crazy talk about X-Men and aliens would scare you off for good. You can't get rid of me that easily, Summers. Now jump in, we have a plane to catch. Above this, Wolverine and Nightcrawler watch from an upper floor window. So, <laughs> that's Scott's new girlfriend. Yep. She, uh, look like anyone to you? Yep. Should we say anything? Nope. If Summers wants dollar store Jean, then let him. He deserves to be happy. Mein Gott! I never thought I'd hear you speak so kindly of the man. Across the hall. In all the excitement, everyone forgot I brought an alien dragon back with me. But you're not the bad kind of alien like those brute, are you? You saved us. But still, you'll need a name. Kitty looks out of her window and down to the basketball court. Hmm. Hey, what about Lockheed? The dragon seems to purr in agreement. All right. Lockheed it is. And in his room, Colossus tries calling his sister for the 23rd time. Come on. Pick up. Pick up, pick up. Where are you, Ilyana? Where is ghost? Peter covers his eyes as a fiery portal appears in the middle of the room. From it comes a female figure. The flames recede moments later. The portal that appears to be hell itself closing. What? Who? He stands and looks down at the person who emerged. A teenage girl who looks to be around 15 or 16 years of age, with long blonde hair, just like... Eyana? Piotr? Brother? It's really you? But, uh... You, you were only twelve last time. What happened? Uh, I don't understand. He is cut off as his sister leaps up and embraces him, tears flowing from her eyes. <gasps> I never thought I'd see you again. I... But it's only been a few days since we last spoke. Not for me, Piotr. She falls back from him and shakes her head. For me, it's been... Yours? I lost track of time in there. In where? Hell, brother. I was in hell. What? But I escaped, and I'm gifted now. Peter watches in amazement 
as his sister's eyes glow blue, and a magic sword appears in her hand. And I have a new name, magic.